in part one of this video we looked at uh, my rebound hardness tester in particular the mechanical aspects of building this and the theory of how the hardness testing works. In this video we're going to look at the magic box. Very simple electronics in here using an Arduino. Let's have a recap of what we're trying to measure with the magic box. Well this is a repeat of the uh, drawing from part one pretty well if you remember we had the tube coming down here which is this half meter long tube and near the bottom we've got a couple of infrared LEDs and a couple of infrared transistors to pick up on the light that comes from these LEDs that light is interrupted as a falling ball bearing crosses the light connections between the LEDs and the IR transistors. So what this box has to do is measure the timing between these, interpret it and give us some hardness readings. Let's see how that's done. Well, here's a simple block diagram from the ball passing through the drop tube all the way through to the display. As the ball passes through the timing sensors, it's traveling at about three meters a second and it takes approximately half a millisecond to close the beam. So we don't get an instantaneous sharp pulse. We pass that through a Smith trigger which is made up from a common dual comparator chip the LM393 that sharpens the pulse before we feed it into the Arduino. The, this schematic shows the full circuit from the in, infrared diode and transistor through the dual comparator acting as a SMIC trigger preparing a signal to be fed into the Arduinos. The reference trigger level is set identically on both channels by means of the two 15k resistors which set the threshold voltage at 50% of the supply voltage. So this means that it triggers halfway up the pulse from the infrared sensors. Now we have uh, a, a simple block diagram showing how this schematic is wired up physically to the component. Some people find that easier than reading a normal schematic. Let's look at the timing we get from the drop sensors after they've passed through the Smith trigger. Here we have the output of both Smith triggers. They've been shifted vertically purely for visual clarity. The lower signal is the one from the first, the top sensor, and the upper signal is the one from the bottom sensor. First important event is to start the timing as the ball passes downwards past the top sensor. That is at point A. As we travel along in time, the next event we want is at point D, which is when the ball passes the lower sensor. And then the ball will bounce and start coming up again, but it will be the lower sensor that will detect it first. That is at point F, that is as the ball passes the lower sensor after its first bounce and then it will pass the top centre at point C on its way up. The timing intervals are important to us are from A to D and from F to C. That will give us the time it takes for the ball to pass through the small 5mm gap between the sensors. 
From that, we can calculate the velocity, both the instant velocity and the rebound velocity. Well, let's see it in action. Well, you sure get a lot of bounces when testing high-speed tool steel. Let's have a look at the signals that that produced. Well, this is an oscilloscope trace of the signals out of the uh, Smith trigger for the bouncing case we just heard. Now, well, the programming of the Arduino only takes any notice of the first drop and rebound. The subsequent ones, which are just simply bounces, are completely ignored. Uh, but it's interesting to note that each successive pair of pulses occurs with a much shorter time between them. This is simply because on each bounce the ball doesn't go so high and so the bouncing is far quicker. Here's a brief rundown of the uh, proof of concept setup for the hardness tester. This is the heart of the the, the beast here. I've got a half meter steel tube. On the end I've got this aluminium block. There are a couple of infrared phototransistors on here, a couple of current limiting resistors, and then a couple of um, in infrared phototransistors here. Uh, there's a hole communicating the infrared light between those. I drop a ball like this down through the top and see how long it takes for the bounces to occur. Here I've just got a, a simple breadboard as a proof of concept. The, the, the main part of it is using an old USB cable that plugs into a rescued USB sock comes in here uh, a couple of um, pull-up resistors here because the phototransistors in here are open collector. That feeds into dual Smith trigger chip which is uh, buried amongst this bunch of wires here. The output of that comes into an Arduino here which is fed by this 9 volt battery and drives the LCD display here. This is a reasonably hefty lump of uh, 41. 44 pop that on there and now I'll drop a ball down just reset the Arduino and there we are it shows us four values of uh, hardness in rock we'll see that was uh, 50 which is about what one would expect well having proved the concept it was time to put it into reality and box it up this is the back side of the board that I used uh, this is the front side the Arduino in a box, the display in a box, that's the back side of it, all components in a box, and the finished boxed up item, ready to be used. When I've finished any project, I always ask, what is there that I would have done differently if I was doing it again? Well, in this case, about the only thing that I would have done would be to use the slotted optical pickups that you can get in one piece as shown in the inset in, instead of using individual components that were fitted into the bottom of the aluminium tube. It's not a big deal, it's just it would have saved a little bit of time. I had them on order but I was a bit too impatient to get it finished. If you uh, like this video or any of the others please share subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the uh, button to receive updates of any other videos thanks for watching